They said, we'll get you a hair dryer, Mr. Trump. I said, no, thanks. Let's just go see our friends. Let's... Hey, speaking of friends, we have a great guy, somebody who's represented you for a long time, and he's done a great job, Congressman Bill Schuster. Where's Bill? Come on up, Bill. And Bill has a thing called a debate, so I hope he does as well as I did. No. Good luck, Bill. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. What a crowd. This is some place. This is some place. Man. And, and I hate to tell you, but I especially love the pink signs. I like the pink sign. Thank you. Thank you. In 18 days, we are going to win the state of Pennsylvania, and we are going to win back the White House. We're going to. I just left North Carolina. You had to see the crowds. There's something going on that's very special. I mean, look at this place. Look at that corner. Look at these corners. And we have thousands of people outside. And in all fairness, when Hillary comes, not a lot of people. Not a lot of people. tough. They grow them tough in Pennsylvania, you know? They do, I know. I went to school in Pennsylvania. I went to school in Pennsylvania. But you have to vote on November 8th, or we wasted time. We just wasted a lot of time, and in my case, a lot of money. Time, energy, and money. You know where they all say that it doesn't matter if you win or lose, what we've done has never been done. It's true, never been done in this country before. Crowds like this, this whole thing, us getting the nom us, it's really us, but us getting the nomination, and now going on. And by the way, polls coming out that are really fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> Our opponents have spent more money than ever before in the history of campaigns, raised from special interests in Wall Street. And yet we're leading in the polls from Rasmussen, just came out, the Los Angeles Times, and the one that was the most accurate poll last time, Investors Business Daily. Just came out, we're leading. Nationwide, we're leading. Together, we're going to deliver real change that once again puts America first. Gotta have it. We're going to renegotiate our terrible trade deals, end illegal immigration, stop, for your community especially, they were just asking me outside, the media, stop the massive inflow of refugees, reduce surging crime, cut taxes and regulations, and repeal and replace Obamacare. Disaster. <laughs> This place is unbelievable. Thank you. And we are going to stop this incredible and disgusting drug flow that's pouring into our country and poisoning our youth. It's poisoning our youth and plenty of other people. But it is poisoning our youth. We're stopping it. It's going to be stopped. It's going to be stopped fast. And we're going to build the wall. Don't worry about it. to be than a Trump rally. And I wouldn't want to be a protester today at a Trump rally. Did you see? Did you see what came out over WikiLeaks? 
And did you see what came out just the other day on protesters? I couldn't understand. Nobody could understand. We had these protesters come in, and they were pretty violent guys. And our people are pretty tough cookies, right? And they ended up, and it turned out that they were paid by the DNC indirectly. And they were put in. And we had a couple. We had one in Chicago that was so bad, and they attacked police. So those guys should be put in jail. They attacked police. They attacked our protesters, but they can handle themselves pretty good, folks, I think. They handled themselves so well that people felt sorry for the protesters. But you know what? These were paid. They were paid $1,500, and they got a cell phone. And this all came out over the last couple of days. You saw it, big thing. And the guy that was in charge visited the White House 344 times. Can you believe that? 344 times, and they blame Trump for protesters, and Trump for the violence, and Trump for this and that. And my protesters, I mean, people that were defending themselves got blamed, got arrested, and it turned out it was a whole big scam. Remember, folks, it's a rigged system. Just remember it. It's a rigged system. It's a rigged system. Don't ever forget it. That's why you got to get out and vote. You got to watch because this system is totally rigged. 344 times visited the White House, the guy that was in charge. It is so sad. And I was angry. I said, you know, my people are getting a little bit too tough. And then I said, these people were all professionals. They got paid a lot of money. Terrible. I'll tell you what. What's going on in our country today is terrible. It's terrible. And Obama ought to stop campaigning for crooked Hillary, and he ought to get out there and get your jobs back and make better trade deals and build up our military and take care of our vets instead of campaigning for Hillary with his wife. Your jobs will come back under a Trump administration, that I can tell you. That I can tell you. Including your steel, which has been decimated in this area, once the proud champion your steel has been decimated and we know all about the games where china's dumping all over the place they're dumping steel your steel will come back your energy will be protected it will be a whole different ball game for it. we will no longer be the dumb people we'll be the genius people believe me we'll be the people that understand your incomes will go up under a Trump administration. Your taxes will go way, way, way down under a Trump administration. And with Hillary, your taxes are going way up, and you saw that. Your companies, so importantly, won't be leaving Pennsylvania under a Trump administration. There will be consequences if they want to. Consequences. They're not going to be leaving. We are going to bring prosperity back to Johnstown. We're going to bring it back. We're going to bring it back. Your community helped build this country, one of the great places on earth. The iron and steel forged in your mills formed the backbone of our nation. You were the leading steel producer in the United States. Did you know that? I just met a group of folks from a remaining mill, steel mill, and I said, so can you compete with other countries, in particular China? And the woman who's a terrific woman, where is that woman? She's around here someplace. She is a terrific, Jackie, where are you, Jackie? She said our government makes it almost impossible for us to compete. They're still open, but you're going to be competing, and you're going to be competing like you've never competed before. So don't worry about it, Jackie. Hang in, Jackie. This was the town that people flocked to from around the world to make their American dreams come true. So true. The Pennsylvania Railroad was a gateway to prosperity. 
The Cambria Iron Company right here in Johnstown is etched into the great American story. So too is its successor, Bethlehem Steel Company. It was the heartbeat of this town. The workers at the mills, at the coal mines, and by the way, we're putting your miners back to work. Clean coal, clean coal, beautiful clean coal. And all across this city fulfilled and exceeded their obligations to our country. They did their part. They lived up to their duties as Americans, their duties to their families, to their communities, to their country. They fought in our wars. They paid their taxes. They powered this nation. But in return, our politicians failed you and betrayed you. They allowed foreign countries to dump cheap steel into our markets and shut you down. Our politicians failed the workers of Johnstown and gave your jobs to foreign countries and foreign producers. We got the poverty. They got the factories, the jobs, and the wealth. Now, more than one in three people in this magical city are living in poverty. Think of it, you politicians. These are stupid people. Believe me, stupid people. Just like Mosul, you saw that. They're announcing for months they're going to go and attack Mosul. I say, why the hell don't you do it and talk about it afterward? Right? Do it and talk later. Remember when we were growing up, we'd read about the great generals, General MacArthur, General George Patton, so many of our great generals. They used to have a thing called the element of surprise. You know what now the element of surprise is? Obama getting up and announcing that we're attacking. We will be attacking Mosul because we think a lot of ISIS is living there, a lot of the leaders. So guess what happens? About two hours later, all the leaders are gone. These are stupid people. I like that. Median household income is only $25,000. Your government betrayed you, and I'm going to make it right. Get out and vote. Get out and vote in November. Look, it's your last chance. Folks, all of us, I didn't need to do this, believe me. This is work. I'm getting piled on by these dishonest people like nobody ever like nobody else. So I didn't need to do it. And don't forget, I was on the other side. I was on the other side at the highest level. But I saw what was happening. And I said, this is never going to work. We're going to lose our country if we keep going and doing what they're doing. And I came over to this side. And I love this side because we've created a movement that's never, ever been created before in this country. And they admit that. They admit it. Uh, you've heard me say it. Bill O'Reilly and others say the greatest single political phenomena in their lifetimes. That's what it is. Look at this arena. If these people were honest, they'd show this arena. Why don't you show the arena, folks? Why don't you show it? You notice the cameras never turn. Those cameras never turn. They never, ever turn.
all the time you go home and you want to see how is the crowd. And yet if Hillary has 500 people, they'll say, oh, she had a fantastic crowd. Here we have thousands. They just said this is a new record for this arena, and there are thousands of people outside, and the media won't even mention. But if Hillary has 500 people, they'll say, oh, what a fantastic crowd. And wait till you see the, wait till you see the results on November 8th. People are going to say, wow, that's really surprising. Because the whole deal is rigged, so you watch it, folks. Generations of failure and neglect are going to be coming to an end when we win this election on November 8th. I've been on the inside. I've seen how the system works. I think I probably know how the system works better than anybody. Now I'm on your side, and I'm here to fight for you, and we're going to win. Together, we're going to smash the corrupt establishment and deliver justice for the forgotten, and these are forgotten men and women, the forgotten men and women of this country. Hillary Clinton, as WikiLeaks proves, is a corrupt globalist. Don't worry, that whole thing will be looked into. It's really, really sad. It's really, really sad. Yesterday you read the story of a great four-star general who told one story to the FBI. They said it wasn't true. Might have been a lie. And guess what? His life is destroyed. He could go to jail for five years. She lied over and over and over and over. Thirty-nine times, right, she said to the FBI on July 4th weekend, not recorded and not sworn in. Not recorded and not sworn in. She said, I can't recall 39 times. Well, that's a lie because everything there she could recall. WikiLeaks show her entire position on the Trans-Pacific Partnership is a total lie. And you saw that during the debate, the second debate, where she said, oh, no, no. Uh, remember what I called? What did she say? What did she say? She said what? Trans-Pacific Partnership. She said it was the gold standard. During the debate, she said, no, no, I never said that. She also said, with the line in the sand, the red line in the sand, no, I wasn't Secretary of State. Turned out she was Secretary of State. I thought so. And who won the debates, by the way? Well, <laughs> Thank you. She's raking in money from foreign lobbyists. I'm running to represent America and America first. You, all of us, together. Me, you, everybody. We're going to renegotiate the Clinton's NAFTA. He signed NAFTA, the worst trade bill ever signed, done in world history. To stop TPP, we're going to stop TPP. That will be almost as bad as NAFTA. Nothing, nothing can be as bad as NAFTA. But Trans-Pacific Partnership will be almost as bad. And we're going to stand up to foreign product dumping and currency manipulation, the likes of which you've never seen. Makes it impossible for our businesses to compete. 70,000, you've heard me say this, I thought it was a typo. How could it be so much? 70,000 factories 
and you know better than anybody in this area, have shut down or left the United States since China entered the World Trade Organization. Think of it, 70,000 factories. President Obama is out campaigning. He should be focusing on jobs, on ISIS, on crime, on bringing back our manufacturing and not campaigning for crooked Hillary. When I'm president, we're going to start making things again in America. And we are really going to start making things in your great state where I went to school, Pennsylvania. We're also going to unleash the power of American energy right here in Pennsylvania. Shale, oil, natural gas, clean coal, and all the new infrastructure that comes along with it. The Secure Energy for America Association just endorsed, guess who, Donald Trump. I'm not surprised. We are putting Pennsylvania back to work, and we're putting the special interests out of work. We're also going to rebuild our depleted military. These are the greatest people on earth, but our military is depleted. It's depleted. Our Navy is the smallest it's been since World War I. My plan, which 35 of the leading defense experts in the country endorsed this week, and by the way, I have endorsing me 200 admirals and generals and 21 and 21 congressional well, you know the medal of honor these are people that are seriously brave more brave than me i'll tell you that medal of honor winners we have 21 and we have 200 admirals and generals have endorsed donald Trump. so we have the the lowest number of ships since World War I. We will build the Navy back to 350 ships. That's the number that we need. We're going to have the largest effort at rebuilding our military since Ronald Reagan. And by the way, and this is when we need it. The world hates our president. The world hates us. You saw what happened with the Philippines. After years and years and years, they're now looking to Russia and China because they don't feel good about the weak America. Can you imagine this is happening to us? And that's a very, very strategic location. Remember, he didn't want Obama to come there a few weeks ago. Obama was supposed to visit there. He turned the plane. He left. He should have done that with other countries. You want to know the truth? Like when they wouldn't meet him at Air Force One. He should have said, Captain, let's get out of here. That happened in Saudi Arabia, right? That happened in Cuba, right? Probably the first time it's ever happened in the fabled history of Air Force One. So all of this will require a truly national effort. The Philadelphia Naval Yard is a perfect example. I will instruct my Secretary of the Navy to study locations like Philadelphia with a long history of service to our military and proximity to vibrant private industry, what's a better place? And find ways to involve them in this national effort. We're bringing jobs back to Philadelphia. We're bringing jobs back to Pennsylvania. We will rebuild our Navy and we will do it with American steel made right here in Pennsylvania. There won't be dumping, there won't be dumping, and there will not be currency manipulation. And if there is, there's going to be a price to pay. Don't forget, we're the piggy bank. We've rebuilt China. They've taken so much money out of our country. We've rebuilt. You have to see the airports, the roadways, the tunnels, and we have stuff that's all falling down. Our infrastructure's a mess. As part of our plan for bold change to make your life better, we will also rebuild our massively depleted infrastructure. Instead of rebuilding other countries, our plan targets substantial new investment here at home to fix America's transportation, 
drinking water, and other vital infrastructure. This can be achieved through a focus on public-private partnerships, proven financing programs, and tax credits that incentivize companies to make major job and wealth-producing investments in your community. This means help for projects like the Pennsylvania Turnpike as well as the Pennsylvania portion of the Appalachian Highway System, which are falling apart in all due respect. My plan will also help Pennsylvania upgrade or replace bridges of the Commonwealth that have been deemed structurally deficient, so many of them. You almost don't want to ride across, right? Does anybody ever want to swim and just relax and know you're going to be alive? No, there's so many are structurally deficient. Obama, and we don't do anything. We'll go to different places in the Middle East. We have spent now $6 trillion in the Middle East. And we are in far worse shape than we were 15 years ago. If we would have done nothing, you wouldn't have the migration. You wouldn't have the wars. You wouldn't have, we are so much further away than we were before we spent. So we spent $6 trillion. $6 trillion. We spent $6 trillion. And what do we have? A total mess. A total and complete mess. So if we did nothing, if we did absolutely nothing, We'd be in great shape. Unbelievable. And then we back the rebels. The rebels turn out to be worse than the guys that were there in the first place. We don't know who the hell we're backing. What a group we have. What a group of geniuses. Then they say to me during the debate, and I tell them more or less, but kids, you have to. But they say, Mr. Trump. How would you defeat ISIS? I say, you know, I have a real chance of winning this thing. I don't really want to tell you. Does that make sense? You know? Does that make sense? But, Mr. Trump, the American people demand to know. I said, no, no, they don't. The reporters demand to know. They're the only ones. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Obama, Clinton doubled the national debt in 10 years. But instead of rebuilding America with the money, it was all lost. And our infrastructure is like a third world country. So we owe more money than we've ever owed. We're up to $20 trillion. And you know, it'd be one thing, it's like buying a company. It'd be one thing if the roads were in great shape, the hospitals, the schools, the bridges, everything, great shape. Places falling apart. And we owe $20 trillion. That's a problem. But I'll solve it. I'm good at things like that. <laughs> Hillary Clinton, when she ran the State Department, lost or misplaced? They use the word misplaced. $6 billion. You ever hear of that one? And now, and now she's going to come in and run the country, right? I don't think so. Hillary's the most corrupt person ever to seek the office of the presidency. Now, from WikiLeaks, we've just learned she tried to get $12 million from the King of Morocco for an appearance. More pay for play. $12 million. Man. WikiLeaks also shows in new emails, the Clinton campaign boasting about working with, quote, very friendly and malleable reporters, including a reporter from the New York Times they described as safe. I have that same reporter. She's not safe. She's brutal on us. I wish my people would say she's safe. Oh, she's safe, meaning she'll do whatever the hell they want her to do. We are in a rigged system. And a big part of the rigging are these dishonest people in the media. Big part. Big part of it. Isn't it amazing how, you know, they don't even want to look at you, folks. I think they consider you like Hillary. They consider you deplorable and irredeemable also. The media, the special interests, Wall Street, 
to career politicians. The system is rigged, and I've been saying it for a long time. And believe me, I'm right, but with your help, we're going to beat the system, and we're going to unrig the system. That's why I'm proposing a package of ethics reforms to make our government honest once again. It's time to drain the swamp in Washington, D.C. By the way, tonight when you go home and watch this on television, the only people you're going to see, it's the only people they'll show. No, they're not going to show the record-setting crowd. They're going to show the people back. But you know what? Their seat isn't as good, but they're going to become more famous because of this. But their seat. But the only people you see are the people. They never move it. They never. Now, do we have, let's, could somebody act out being a protester so the cameras all move up? Oh, there's a protester. There's a protester. The only time they move those cameras. Oh, look, there's a protester. Look. There's another protester. These people are the worst. One new proposal I'm outlining today will help us put the corrupt regulatory industry out of business. The regulatory group, they are putting your mines, your natural gas, they're putting you out of business, folks. They're taking your jobs away. I will work with Congress to require that for every one new regulation, two old regulations must be immediately eliminated. We're losing $2 trillion in economic activity a year just due to regulations. Think of it. The only people getting rich are the lobbyists and lawyers and special interests. They're all making a fortune off these regulations. I'm also going to push for a constitutional amendment to impose term limits on all members of Congress. Not only will we end government corruption, but we'll end economic stagnation and we'll end it quickly. My plan lowers our business tax from 35 percent to 15 percent and lowers our middle income taxes. We're going down to three brackets from seven. Taxes are coming way down for individuals. Hillary is raising your taxes substantially. We're already the highest tax. We're already the highest tax nation in the world. We're also going to rebuild our inner cities. African Americans and Hispanics living in the inner cities are suffering. The violence is unbelievable. You walk to the store with your child and you get shot. So much, so much violence. Worse than some of the war zones that you're talking about. There's no education. There are no jobs. There are no safety. Just no safety. In Chicago, 3,500 people have been shot since January 1st. Can you believe that? Since January, 3,500. Homicides are up nearly 50% in Washington, D.C., and more than 60% in Baltimore. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. To the African-American and Hispanic voters, I say... What the hell do you have to lose? I will fix it. Vote for Donald Trump. I'm going to fix it. We're going to fix it. We're going to fix it. The Democrats have run the inner cities for, in some cases, over 100 years, unbroken. And they haven't done anything except every four years they come in and get the vote and they take it for granted. They don't do anything. We're going to help the African-American community, the Hispanic community. We're going to help, and we're going to fix our inner cities, and we're going to get jobs. We will be a rich nation once again. But to have a rich country, 
we must also be a safe country. National security begins at the border. Speaking in a secret meeting to a foreign bank, Hillary Clinton said her dream is for totally open trade, there go your jobs, and open borders, there goes your country. There goes your country. Hillary's plan includes an open border with the Middle East, meaning generations of radicalism and terrorism spreading and growing within our shores. It's going to spread. It's going to grow. We don't know who these people are. We don't know where they come from. This will be the great Trojan horse of our era. And I don't want to be around. I don't want to be the one that's responsible for the great Trojan horse. She's bringing in 550% more than the tens of thousands that Obama's leaving. We can't do it. Folks, we have enough problem. We have enough problem. So let me state this, and I'll state it very, very clearly. If I'm elected president, I'm going to keep radical Islamic terrorists the hell out of our country. great how much we all love America. Isn't it great? Okay. We love our country. We will also stop the crisis of illegal immigration. A Trump administration will secure and defend our borders. And yes, we will build that wall. It will be built. And Mexico will pay for that wall. We have the first ever endorsement from our great people of ICE and the Border Patrol officers. First time they've ever endorsed a presidential candidate. Because they want to do their job. They know what has to be done. And they love the country. They want to do it right. They know what has to be done. It was just reported that a man deported from our country 10 times in six years has been charged with the raping of a 12-year-old girl. In August, Texas police arrested a serial illegal immigrant who had been deported five times. The victims included one 68-year-old woman with a cane who took his offer to drive her home. He left her on the side of a road, severely, severely beaten. A 64-year-old Air Force veteran, Marilyn Ferris, was raped and beaten to death with a hammer by a repeat offending criminal, illegal immigrant, who should have been deported. They wanted to deport him but the Obama administration never got around to it. If I'm elected, we will impose tough new mandatory minimum federal prison sentences for anyone who illegally re-enters the country after previously being deported. That way, they're not coming back. And we will swiftly remove and deport all criminal aliens from this country and dismantle the gangs and cartels preying on our citizens and our youth. Either we win this election or we lose our country, and it's really at that. It's really at that. A victory in November will be a victory for you, the American people, and that's 100 percent. It's a victory for this country. To finish up, here are some of the amazing things we're going to do for our country starting in 2017. We are going to have the biggest tax cut since Ronald Reagan, and even actually a little bit bigger. We're going to eliminate every unnecessary job-killing regulation. We are going to defend religious liberty. We'll be providing school choice, so important, to every low-income child in America. And we're going to end Common Core and bring education local. We're going to support the men and women of law enforcement. We're going to save our Second Amendment 
which is totally under siege. And we will be appointing justices to the United States Supreme Court who will uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. For the next 18 days, you have to get every last person you know out to the voting booths. This is our one magnificent chance to reclaim our country for we, the people. It's our last chance. I'm going to fight for every citizen of every background from every stretch of this nation. I'm going to fight for every child living in poverty. I'm going to fight for every mom who lost her child to illegal immigration and drugs and gang violence. I'm going to fight for every community whose jobs and factories have been ripped out, ripped out of your state and so many other states. You look at what's happened in Ohio and look at New England, look at the areas of New England, look at upper New York State, look at what's happened to our country. And they've shipped all of these jobs and all of these companies, they've shipped them to other countries. We don't make things anymore. We're going to have Apple start making things in our country. We're going to have companies like Apple start making things not in China, not in Vietnam, and not all over the world. And they'll be happy to do it. We're going to have these great companies make things in our country. I'm going to fight for every person in this country who believes government should serve the people, not the donors and the special interests. And I'm going to fight to bring us all together as Americans. We are a divided nation. We're going to fight to bring everybody together. Imagine what our country could accomplish if we started working together as one people under one God, saluting one American flag. In 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, you're going to look back at this rally for the rest of your life. You're going to remember this day. This is a movement like has never taken place in our country before. And the dishonest media doesn't like talking about our movement. They don't like talking about it. You're going to look back at this election and say this is by far the most important vote you've ever cast for anyone at any time. You're going to be proud of your country again, and hopefully you're going to be very proud of your president, who's going to do the job. If we win, If we win, the change you've been waiting for will finally arrive. You must get out to vote. We will win. We will shock the world. This is going to be Brexit plus. Brexit plus. And a lot of people know it. They say, we can't poll this thing. Did you hear some of the pollsters? I just left North Carolina. One of the big pollers said, we can't poll this thing. And one of the great congressmen from Tennessee just told me, he said, you know, Mr. Trump, we've never seen anything like what's happening. We've never, ever. He said, I've been doing this for 25 years. Never seen. They say, we can't poll this thing. People that we've never seen before, great people that have never voted before because they've never felt like voting. They've never had the confidence in the people that are running. They're coming out and they're wearing Trump shirts and hats and gone from forget it. They're amazing. They're amazing. And believe me, they love this country. So we have to win. November 8th, go out and vote. And we will make America wealthy again. <laughs> 